If you'd asked me in 2017 where I'd be in a year, cycling along the edge of a Norwegian fjord at the beginning of a 6,000 kilometer journey wouldn't have been one of my guesses. But here I was. A few months earlier, I'd come up with an idea to meet people from different parts of the world and interview them, exploring the places I visited through the eyes of local people. For that, I needed to get off the beaten track. And what's the best way to do that? I'd say a bicycle is a top contender. So I've flown mine to Tromsø and began the craziest adventure of my life. I was joined by a now ex-girlfriend, Miriam, at the beginning, so I wasn't starting totally alone. But it still took a lot of getting used to. Oh my god, it's like it's like going up, I'm on a flat and it's like going uphill because of the wind. I kind of can't believe it today was really hard it was oh my god I don't, I don't know how realistic this is gonna be i'd assumed the challenge would be physical that it would all be burning thighs aching backs and breathless climbs that's a big part of it for sure but i quickly found that for me the hurdles were mostly in my head it didn't help that i had no clue what i was doing no experience with bikes, and no real route plan other than my final destination, Baku, in Azerbaijan. I jumped in at the deep end and hoped for the best. So I thought of Norway as the adjustment phase. What did that mean? Well, a bit of homesickness, the occasional emotional breakdown, and a lot of me trying to convince myself not to quit and go home. You do quickly fall into a routine. Wake up in a tent. Pack away your gear. Find a place to wash. A fjord will do. Sort out food and water. Set off and cycle as far as you can. Find a spot to camp. And repeat. Living outside in 24-hour daylight was surreal. But as the days turned into weeks... The lack of adequate nutrition, since food was so expensive, the isolation and exhaustion wore us down, to the point where we resorted to spending the night in ferry waiting rooms for some warmth and mosquito-free shelter. We slept in another uh, waiting room last night, and this is the noise we had to put up with, because the ferry never stopped running. Um, so we're knackered. So that's waiting room number three that we slept in. This is easily the worst waiting room we've slept in so far. And we weren't really meeting local people. That had been the whole purpose of the trip. So I'd find my mind slipping into panic at the realization that this might be what life would be like for the next 18 months. And I started to worry that I might have bitten off more than I could chew. I'm finding today quite hard for some reason. I'm feeling a bit homesick. Um, I'm getting tired really quickly. I tried not to let it show on camera, adopting a smile till you feel happy attitude. But at this stage, I was thinking of giving up every day. So, we're in Lofoten, and the visibility is awful. It just started raining a lot. But a friend of ours told us, and I kind of agree, that if you're going to do a trip like this, you kind of have to learn to embrace like all kinds of weather. Uh, otherwise, you're just you're gonna have a horrible time. From here you can actually see the route that we cycled. We came all the way um, along here, along the coast, round there, along there, back up, round the end of the fjord and up this road. Yeah. Open flames like the one on our camping stove had been banned further south after a drought. So we had no choice but to abandon our inhibitions. We have some pasta and we're actually going to have to knock on some doors um, to ask if we can heat up the pasta there. So, fingers crossed, someone's going to let us do it. For a Brit, that's a big deal. 
we don't go up to random people to ask for help. We get nervous when approaching shop assistants or calling over waiters. But letting go of all that led us to the Berg family. Hello! Hey. Hey. Oh, hey. Hello, world! Uh, that, this is great! Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for stopping by. After an evening of chatting and eating, a refreshing change after the isolation on the road, they offered us a place to stay in a cabin in their garden. Such spontaneous hospitality was a welcome break from cycling, and we got on so well that one night turned to two, and then three. Yeah. So, yeah. dinner number three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So this has been our home for the last three nights, and it's been amazing in here. So we're in, uh, what's the name of the mountain? Uh, uh, Dovrefjell. Dovrefjell. And Snöheter. Snöheter. This has been the best three days of the trip so far. They'd treated us like family, and the goodbye, even after a relatively short stay, uh, was emotional. Bye, bye, bye. Really yeah, Thank this is... You. Yes, choose and talk to your family as well. This has been the highlight of the trip. I didn't know it at the time, but that encounter was about to flip the entire experience on its head. We knocked on the right door uh, when we asked to cook our food. like a lot of rain coming our way. We're just uh, now trying to outrun this storm that you might be able to see behind me. Apparently, it is winning. Okay, so it's really, really raining now. How are you doing, Miriam? Yeah, uh, really good day to be back on the road. After meeting the Bergs, instead of keeping to ourselves, we continued to knock on doors to heat up food. And nearly every time, after getting to know our hosts, we were also offered either a bed or a spot to camp. So we just uh, had another night staying with a local family. Who's and duck? Are Are It kept us going, and the worry I'd had in the north began to fade away. Who's and duck for us? Thank you so much. While the scenery on the cycle tour was often mesmerizing, when I look back on the trip now, it's the people I crossed paths with that stick in my memory the most. They made the adventure what it was and showed me a side of travel I'd never experienced. There would still be the adjustment to cycle touring solo ahead, but for now, I was learning that a trip like this is as lonely as you choose to make it, if you're willing to put yourself out there with local people. So this is the cabin we're staying in today. And if it hadn't been for the hospitality I experienced in Norway, I might well have been more hesitant to approach people in the other countries I cycled through, and would have missed out on all the friendships I made in a year and a half on the road. And we did cross paths with the Berg family again. When, just before we were about to head into Sweden, we found ourselves invited to Sven and Berit's joint 50th surprise birthday party. We're here now, uh, and Berit and Sven are going to arrive in like half an hour, so this is very exciting. <laughs> Seeing them again was a great way to end our adventure in Norway, before we left the fjords behind to continue our journey south. <laughs>